Uh, my name is Ernest, Ernest Obux Agoba. Uh, I'm a professor of uh, visual and performance design in the University of Jos. Um, I'm a painter, um, a photographer, and uh, a dramatist. Well, uh, it's, it's actually difficult because uh, when you're an artist, you're a theater artist, and now you're a photographer, even though all of them are um, within the creative um, uh, um, hemisphere, it's, um, it's difficult because each of them demands a lot of attention uh, from you. Uh, but incidentally, because uh, my desire to um, express myself uh, sometimes gets very strong, sometimes I feel that just being in one of them may not be uh, sufficient enough for me. So uh, sometimes I try handling uh, expressions in paintings, uh, handling them in photography, and then uh, sometimes I move into drama. You know, I get a lot of gratification from combining the three of them. Well, well, the truth is that you actually find time. Um, as a visiting professor in a university, you're not uh, overladen with too much work. Uh, the whole essence is to simply just uh, exchange uh, uh, knowledge or impact uh, students um, in as little a way as you can. You're not giving too much work. Well, you see, after you have done that, it's uh, equally, it's, very, it's uh, quite easy for you to get back home and then do all the necessary uh, practical work you may need to do. The truth is that practical work is equally found even in uh, the, the coursework, even in the, even in the um, work you do in the university as a visiting professor. So, but uh, somehow you just managed to find an ingenious manner by which uh, you could achieve all of this, nevertheless. <laughs> well, the truth is that um, I have seen arts basically as a tool by which um, the artist could uh, get himself involved in the field of politics. Or let me put it this way, because using the word politics may be a little denigrating. I think leadership should be the word. You know, as artists, I think we should be in the battlefront. We should be, uh, be able to carry our... Um, um, our tools, you know, as a means by which we can, you know, impact leadership skills amongst people. Especially now that uh, it looks like in the whole of Africa, our major problem appears to be uh, hinged around uh, issues of leadership. You know, we have political problems, instability, we have all kinds of leadership issues, you know, uh, plaguing the African continent. And I think it's about time that uh, everybody, not just even the artists, everybody, uh, 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 notwithstanding the profession you belong to, whether you're a doctor, whether you're an engineer, you're an artist, an artisan, whatever you are, everybody should be looking towards uh, the front line of leadership so that we can use uh, uh, our, our profession, our individual profession, to see how we can you know, uh, better the lives of people in Africa. So that's to see how we can conscientize those in power so that uh, uh, leadership in Africa does not, does not longer become what it is today. You know, the amount of suffering, the amount of pains that Africans are going through uh, tends to uh, affect me rather negatively and positively. Uh, negatively because I'm pained by it and I see people every day, you know, going through one uh, problem or the other. And uh, I tend to feel that one of the things I could do in my art is to create the consciousness amongst people of the world, amongst leaders, that all is not well here. So that consciousness has to be first created using my arts, and then uh, we have to look for means. I equally look for means even in my art by which, uh, you know, uh, one could create succor for such problems. So basically, uh, emergency room is actually a platform that I've created uh, to help uh, network other artists, not just me alone, so that even amongst the artists, we can have people that may be carrying the same, um, uh, that may be carrying the same vision as me, and uh, with whom I could uh, work uh, in, in order to ensure that these objectives are, are achieved.
that's uh, not peculiar to Nigeria alone. It's uh, not peculiar to Africa. Uh, but I think to the entire world itself, even when you get to the United States or you get to Europe or something, it's still uh, an elitist thing, you know. Um, but uh, we'll say elitist because uh, art itself in so many societies is not, uh, is not cheap. And uh, oftentimes uh, people tend to use it as a means of uh, uh, displaying their status symbols. You know, especially that is when you are looking at arts, especially at the very upper, upper, upper level. You see, but art has hierarchy. You have what you may call, uh, uh, they are all called arts, but you may have what they, what they call cheap arts, and cheap art is equally patronized. You're not looking at that. You're looking at those that you hear $1 million, $10 million, and all that, and you say, oh, look, oh, that's only possible at the top. But there are cheap arts that are as cheap as even 20000 30000 that people still afford. You understand? So uh, at different levels, uh, there is affordability for arts, you understand. But um, affordability this time around is relative. For those that are at the lower level, they are able to afford those that their monies can buy. And at the middle level is the same thing, at the higher level is the same thing. I personally think that the one you are referring to as elitist is the one that is at the top, you understand. So I believe that uh, art is afforded at almost every level. Yes, I will tell you the truth. Um, most of the time, um, um, you have different types of artists in our society today. And uh, you find out that the art itself, the, the profession of art itself, just like every other profession, um, has been besieged, I want to use that word, by uh, different personalities of artists. Uh, those that may not necessarily be trained, those that are trained and those that are highly trained, uh, those that are experienced in the profession and are still producing, and those that simply just crash into it and uh, decide to make a lot of noise and uh, decide to uh, especially ascribe different types of um, uh, meanings and realities to their works. So sometimes you find it difficult to understand art. Uh, the meaning of art has become obtuse, it has become rather difficult to understand for people, especially in a, in a country like in Africa, where one is not so educated in the general fields of education, not to talk about arts, other art appreciation. It's difficult for an ordinary man or uh, somebody who is not so, uh, 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 who is not uh, well off financially, to simply uh, say, oh, I'm looking at this work of art and he looks at it, and it's abstractual, it's an abstract work, and he can't understand what is done, because in the world of abstracts, you have to use a lot of mental power to be able to understand and reason with the artist. And oftentimes, when an artist creates a piece of work, and uh, he, he, it depends again upon how that work was created. So many artists today have used the word crashed into the arts, they simply just do what I may call escapist arts. Escapist arts, uh, I, I'm using it without mincing the word, is a situation where they simply just flow to wherever their brushes and their pens take them without first engaging inside them that this is what I want to do and painstakingly strive to achieve it. So, so many times you find such artists that are not patient enough, that may not be skilled enough to, to um, and grafts on the canvas uh, what they actually wanted from beginning, so that from beginning to the end, they are sticking to it. So, so many times you find spontaneous patterns on the canvas, accidental patterns on the canvas that their artists themselves may not readily have understood or even, even readily understand. And they simply step back and look at it and say, oh, I love, I love those patterns. And they give it a name from nowhere, from the blue. And simply expect that uh, the ordinary man or even the art, appre the art uh, uh, appreciator will simply look at it and say, oh, I love it. So, so many times they end up uh, creating confusion on the canvas. And they expect that, yes, the, the, the percipient, the art appreciator, will look at it and be able to take away that confusion. They get confused themselves. Because if you create confusion on canvas, 
you will expect that whoever is going to look at the work will equally be confused. And so if the person does not understand, you come and try to make the person, you don't try to make the person understand. The art itself is supposed to be independent, it's supposed to be able to speak to you. You understand, suppose you don't need the art, because the artist is never going to be there. If the art travels all over the world and uh, sees different audience, the artist will not be there to explain it. So the artwork itself should, to a large extent, be self-explanatory. And so if the artist does not put in the processes uh, that are required to be able to engage the recipient, the art may become um, impossible to get through. And then you wouldn't expect such a person to say, oh, I want to spend 10 million on this piece of work. It doesn't work that way. No. You see, before you form anything, before you form anything, any physical thing, you should be able to conceive what that thing should be. You should be able to uh, conceive the purpose for which that thing is created. You should be able to have defined objectives. You should be able to have motivations, you know, uh, by which that thing is created. If you don't have any motivations, if you don't have any inspiration, if you don't have, you don't have any inspiration and motivation, that means the work doesn't have a purpose. Uh, they are mostly, that's why I've said I don't like to use the word political, politics. Uh, they simply, um, what I try to do, especially in my work, is simply to engraft thought patterns that can help to make us see beyond our noses, see beyond the ordinary, because there are so many facades, there are so many cover-ups. I, I want to be able to speak to people and say, this is not the way things should be. This is the way it ought to be. And too many times, because um, our, our, our realities are normally conditioned by uh, our, our political, uh, by the political thoughts or political, um, um, uh, by the politics of our society. So, so many times you find out that such messages in my work or in such work or such genre of work uh, should be looking at, should be attacking politics. Should be, they should be looking at the policies on ground, you know, the things that have been created, structures that have been created that are making it difficult for us to be able to breathe as, as, as citizens or uh, as members of a particular society, you know, and those are the things that constitute uh, uh, majorly uh, uh, policies that have been created by our leaders. You understand? The problems we have in Africa today are problems that are created by our leaders. And if we don't attack these problems frontally, it may be difficult for us to be able to get to the promised land. And uh, as an artist, I'm saying that it shouldn't just be the job of an artist. And the truth is that an artist should not simply just shy away from it. Too many times, uh, whenever I say this, you see some artists will say, ah, every art doesn't necessarily have to be political or apolitical. Yes, I agree, but I am saying that right now, especially in Africa, we are in a state of emergency. And when you have an emergency, it's like uh, there is fire on the mountain and uh, nobody's running. That's the idea. I'm saying that we should all be running. I mean, we should all be, be doing what we need to do um, in order to uh, 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 better our society, transform our society, and uh, do what is right, basically. El Salvador Dali, the surrealist. Yes, yes, the truth is, I have been influenced by a number of people, a number of factors, a lot of environmental issues, uh, basically. But you see, the style I try to weave uh, is uh, greatly influenced by uh, the surrealist movement, especially um, it's a particular concept within the surrealist movement that is called biomorphism, you know, where you find shapes getting into the or getting into shapes. Now, what, what is the, what's that whole concept about? How has it influenced me? One, because I felt so many times you feel, see people getting into abstracts, abstract shapes, abstract forms, abstract art and all that. And um, oftentimes I've asked myself, why must I stick to abstracts entirely? And then I see so many people getting talking about realism and realism. Why must I stick to realism? What is biomorphism? Biomorphism of, uh, that uh, you find in uh, the Soilist movement essentially is about, you know, uh, forms, 
uh, getting into themselves and then somehow synthesized, uh, you know, flowing into each other and all that. You see, I, I saw that and I, and I laughed because in my PhD thesis, uh, I did something uh, on what I, I call, especially um, when I was looking at the problems in the theater, in the Nigerian theater and African theater, uh, problems that pertain, especially that had to do with uh, the sets, set designs and all that. So I, I, I looked at a particular concept I call polymorphism. And when I compared polymorphism with biomorphism, I said, oh, these are essentially the same. And so I got into what uh, El Salvador Dali was doing, Max Engst was doing, John Miro was doing, all those great people. And I said, no, this, this is akin to what I did in my PhD thesis. You understand? Now, if you look at it, I, 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 I have abstract shapes, and those abstract shapes tend to morph into each other. Sometimes you find the abstract shapes morphing into realistic shapes, realistic shape morphing into abstract shapes. What is the whole essence? The whole essence is to lead from the known to what I call the unknown. Now, when you find a realistic shape in a work of art, you are able to say, oh, I can identify with this because it's realism. Look at that work, for instance. That work, for instance, tells essentially uh, uh, the same thing as um, what I'm explaining. You know, it has a human head, it has what looks like a balloon, but then you still have abstract shapes around it. And so you find abstracts living with realism. That's essentially uh, what I mean by uh, 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 polymorphism or biomorphism and uh, that's why I think um, that's why I think uh, we should be looking at the type of art we do or the type of art we create so that we can synthesize different elements you know and create a composite form that embraces almost all of them so whoever comes can say oh I can see this and then gradually be led into what the person could not hitherto had seen that's the whole idea Well, um, um, I think that could be done. Um, for so many artists, it's a very difficult period. Difficult because um, uh, this is a post-pandemic period. And uh, apart from being that, um, uh, it's not been too well with Africa recently, especially again because of leadership problems. Um, we've had all kinds of political issues here and there. And uh, so the atmosphere is very untidy. And so if you have an atmosphere that is untidy, it may be difficult for an artist to sit down and begin to reason and begin to think and get creative. Now, that is why it may be difficult for you to find um, such movements again as you used to have before. You see, but this is why I am creating what I call the emergency room artist. You know, now we know that things are not well. We should be able to now readjust ourselves again and say, okay, inspiration or motivation shouldn't be the way it used to be uh, now. Uh, we should be uh, find a way of um, getting inspired again, even, even with uh, the, the discomfort, even with the problems that are around, and see those discomforts and problems as our sources of motivation. You understand? And so with a thing like this, I guess a lot of other artists may decide that, okay, yes, this is true. Uh, let's first and foremost uh, focus on bettering our environment, our society, you know, looking at what is going on now. And then when all is getting well, we can decide to say, okay, let us form different types of movements. If the different type of movements you are creating now are hinged around problem solving, then, um, it, it will be welcome, I guess it will be welcome. So that's the whole idea behind, again, creating uh, a platform like the Emergency Room Artist. Mm -hmm.